What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well, hopefully having a fantastic Friday. Before we jump into today's deck, I just wanted to remind you that I will be out of town this weekend, which means no content over the weekend, no Saturday, Sunday content. We usually don't do too much anyway, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up and a reminder uh, before we jump into today's deck, which is... Witherbloom combo. I am very stoked to be trying out this list. Uh, disclaimer now, I've only had a little bit of practice with this deck and I am not very good with this deck. There is a lot to go through with this one. It's a very combo heavy aristocrats style deck where the idea is essentially to sacrifice a lot of creatures and in doing so, drain your opponent's life for quite a lot. Uh, now the way that we do that is kind of an interesting little combo. Uh, getting a Bastion of Remembrance, getting a, Wither, uh, a Witherbloom Apprentice out, and then a Siege more Witch out. Now, with these three cards, every time you cast an instant or sorcery, uh, this will drain your opponent for a life. This will create another 1-1 one, one creature, and then every time a creature dies, you drain a life with this. So, the trick is to get those cards out and then plumb the plume the forgotten, not plumb the forgotten, uh, and sacrifice a bunch of stuff to draw a bunch of cards, copy this spell, damaging or, or draining one for each copy, draining one for each creature that died, and then creating another creature for every creature you sacrificed. Simple, right? <laughs> uh, it's a really interesting combo. It's a really cool combo. I'm very interested to see how this works and, and see if we can kind of make it happen. Um, I, the rest of the deck is very focused on just getting either tokens out or sacrificing those tokens to kind of get to where you need to be with the exclusion of the Dean of Vane and the Dean of Root here. Ideally, we're playing this as the Dean of Root, uh, if we can. If we don't have a turn one play, we'll play out this uh, the Dean of Vane just because. But uh, having that 4-4, and, and importantly with this ability, whenever you gain life, you can pay one. If you do, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control, and they all gain trample. The idea here being that we can power up those tokens that are out, uh, or those creatures that are out, excuse me. Uh, and then push through for some damage if we just don't have the, the combo going. Uh, we also have Lovestruck Beast as a token generator, but also just as kind of a big beater. We're obviously going to have a lot of little 1-1 one -one tokens, and so having Lovestruck Beast out is just kind of nice. Uh, we do have Eye Witch, which when it dies, we actually get a lesson from the sideboard here. Mostly pest summonings, but we do have Containment Breach and Necrotic Fumes. Uh, we've got Hunt for Specimens, which does a very similar job, uh, creates a little 1-1 token, and then of course we learn as well. Uh, and that's pretty much the deck. Village Rice is in here to kind of draw a couple cards. Gigantha is in here because it can be in here. Uh, it, it It is what it is. Uh, so we're going to give this deck a shot. Uh, like I said, bit of a disclaimer. I have not had much practice with this deck, so this is going to be an early or, or a, uh, a learning experience for all of us today. If you're looking for pro level plays with this deck, I am not the viewer for you. Uh, I apologize, but we're going to have some fun regardless. So let's see what we can do. Uh, and yeah, I do think that this is a worthwhile keep. Uh, we've got the Eye Witch on the face of it. We also just get to uh, throw this down turn one, which is pretty nice. Uh, so we will see how it goes. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, this actually works out great. We've got the Witherbloom Apprentice, so we're just going to throw that out. And I'm all too happy to attack in here. Um, interesting deck here. I'm very curious to see what this actually is. Um... Okay, so here uh, we don't have a great next play, I will say. So what we are going to do is attack in here with the Eye Witch. Um, and I'm actually going to sacrifice it here, mostly to hit the land drop. Um, I, I want to see if we can hit the land drop. If we can, that's great. If not, we will uh, obviously make a choice. I want to get the Necrotic Fumes as just a bit of a uh, insurance policy. And no land, no land. That is bad. That is very, very bad. Um, we did get a Bastion, which is important, um, but here they're going to be able to draw a card. Chances are we could just trade off here since we do have another Witherbloom Apprentice. I'm going to try it. I don't really want them drawing a ton of cards. Um, I just feel like that's bad for us. And because we don't have another turn two play anyway, <laughs> or turn four, whatever we're on, <laughs> <coughs> Not a strong start, I'll be honest. We're, we're lacking in the, uh, the land department. There is that third land. That's helpful. Uh, so what we can do, I think... Let's actually play out the Siege War Witch here. 
<clears throat> um, the reason being, we can actually exile this uh, if it becomes a creature. So, I kind of want to have the uh, the Magecraft ability up and ready to go for that. So, we'll see if it works. It may not. And we may just be taking care of this uh, Rada in, in response here. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Uh, well, here, let's take the opportunity to play the Bastion. We're going to take a pretty big hit here. Um, but you know what? That's okay. Uh, obviously, most likely just going to drain us for two. Yep. And that is not great, but it's fine. Um, okay, field trip. Very cool. I love the art on this card. Look at that beautiful, like, stonework on that. Okay. Uh, so, crucially, we could actually just block something here if we want. Uh, I actually don't think we have to, though. We're going to be draining a lot of life, so it kind of doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so we're just going to attack in first. We're going to play this to sacrifice this, which is going to trigger the Magecraft and drain a good bit of life here. Again, no. My goodness, we are not hitting lands, people. <laughs> this is a problem. Um, we've got a lot of life drain, though, so theoretically we might be able to get somewhere, but... They also have a lot of damage dealing stuff, and that's a little scary, so... Uh, we do have three of the plumes, which is, I mean, good, but we don't really have the creatures to, to take advantage of it, so... We will see how this goes. Um, how much? It's cost six to activate that. Okay. Very good. Um, we're gonna pass. We're not gonna take it. Oh, crap. Yeah, well, that's fine. Um, they have no mana. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> uh, that somewhat helps, I guess. Not really, though, does it? Um, we really need to hit a land here, guys. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna sacrifice just one first. It's gonna drain some life, create another token. Okay. Give us another land. Okay. Land is helpful. Because now we can actually do this multiple times. Um, and we will. We're going to sacrifice two. I maybe should have done three, actually. That might have been a mistake. Nah, I think it works out. It'll be fine. Yeah, I should have done three. Oh, well. We could have sacrificed the witch. We wouldn't have gotten tokens, though. Um, but here, actually, we can just attack in and, and win the game. We did it. Okay. First game of relative success. I think we could have played a little cleaner, but we also didn't really hit lands, so I don't know. Oh. Oh, goodness. You guys can't see this, but something just popped up, and it's... It's weird. Okay. Wait. I don't know what the heck is happening. Magic Arena just crashed. All right, we're going to bring it back up. We will be back momentarily. I have no clue what just happened. That was weird. It was like a little pop-up for Unity, and it was saying like, hey, it's not working. I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's not good. All right, we're loading back up. Guys, I, I think that that worked out pretty well. Like, again, considering we didn't really have lands, that wasn't terrible. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. Um, I think we did okay. Let's let's jump into another one. Let's see if we can get some more wins with this deck. I don't know exactly how long we're gonna play. Probably about half an hour. Um, I'm I'm excited. I love these new like combo decks. I love every time a new set comes out. It's always exciting to see what kind of combos, what kind of builds come out of it. Uh, obviously, we're seeing a lot of really cool stuff uh, with Prismari kind of doing its thing. Like we've got some good decks out there. Um, and this being one of them, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, we will go ahead, we will do this. We're gonna play that Eye Witch out. Uh, very great turn one play, especially with the village rights here. It just allows us at any time to be able to sacrifice it and get a lot of value. Not only do we draw two cards off of it, but we also then uh, get to learn as well. And here we go, this is actually a pretty solid start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. We're going to take advantage of it. Um, and I think we just take the Pest Summoning, honestly. Uh, this, with the Magecraft ability, is definitely, like, the best option. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and play the Bastion here. Uh, do our attacking. And this way, if they do have a sweeper of some kind, ideally it's not extinction event. It probably is, but ideally it's not extinction event and we can actually get around some stuff here, but we'll see. Uh, no land. No land from the opponent here. That's interesting. Um, it's very interesting. They had to discard. Okay. Um, let's attempt another Bastion. They may have a negate or something along those lines to counter this, but we're going to give it a shot. This also might be a situation where they just don't have anything. Ooh, Decisive Denial, a brand new card from Strixhaven. Fantastic. Very cool card. I love this. I think it's a really nice little uh, creature kind of fight spell that also provides that counter interaction. I love that. Okay. Um, let's see if this gets countered. What this does is open up Village Rights or Plume the Forgotten as an option for us here. Um, and if it doesn't get countered, it's just a giant 5-5. Five five. Uh, we do have to be very cautious, though. Again, they could very well have Extinction Events, so um, we want to make sure we're not just running into that completely. Uh, and as such, what we may end up doing is just leaving up the Plume the Forgotten, uh, or Plume the Forgotten, uh, which does allow us to kind of react to whatever they are going to do. We've got plenty of pressure here on the field. They're going to return to our hand... I think what we will do is just go ahead and sacrifice uh, this um, to go ahead and draw a couple cards and deal just a little extra life damage or uh, damage hit to them. Not the best draws, if I'm honest. Not the best draws, but it's fine. Uh, the trick is we don't want to have to plume the forgotten if we don't have to. Uh, the reality is, until we have the the siege war witch out. It's really not very helpful to, to be able to do that. Um, it's great to draw some cards, but it's not super helpful in that we're not draining life or doing any doing anything you know crazy like that. Um, here, I think we just play the Bastion. Um, we could have actually played the Dean of the Root here, but they're going to counter this, which is actually OK. Uh, that doesn't actually bother me too much. Um, Simply because now we're just going to play the Dean here, and then on the following turn we can actually play the opposite side, or we can play the other Bastion. Um, crucially, they do not want that Bastion to stick, so if we get the option to play it down safely, we're probably going to take it. There is a land. Okay. Um, hmm. We're going to move to attacks first. Uh, oh, we could have attacked with the, uh, can I, no. We could have attacked with the Dean here as well. That was a bit of a mistake, um, but that's okay. Does have Menace, something to, uh, to think about there. Do one damage. Um, here, I think it's either Lovestruck Beast or Bastion. Uh, don't particularly want to just run into another counter with the Bastion, since that is very crucial to our game plan. So I'm just going to play out the Lovestruck Beast here and threaten the life total. This very well may eat a counter as well, and that's totally fine. They could also just not have one and be trying to flash out the Brazen Borrower. There's some options here, but I think pressuring their life total right now is probably the best bet. And that is going to stick, uh, in which case we do get to leave up the Plume the Forgotten on the off chance that they do have the, uh, the Extinction event. We just get to hit that in response, draw a bunch of cards, and hopefully not lose out to it. Um, so, we'll see. Interesting. Um, okay. What is What does this do? Trotara creature, Planeswalker to its owner's hand. Uh, actually kind of think that's fine. I mean, it's not great. Uh, because they do get a just really strong thing here, but um, this is very much a Voltron strategy, and we have blockers for days, so I don't think this is a great uh, hit. And honestly, given the fact that they do have the Dragon's Guard Elite, we probably shouldn't be playing to the out of an Extinction event. Um, I doubt that they have it, uh, or that they'd be willing to just fire it off with a 6-6 six -six here on the field that they can double the counters on pretty quickly. Um, so, we will see. 
What is target creature? You, okay. Um, so here I am going to go ahead and just do this. It's going to copy it once, so we do get an extra card, which is obviously good for us. We just need some stuff. That There's the Witherbloom Apprentice. That's really good. Um, and they did not counter that, crucially. Not that they necessarily needed to, because it did get copied. That It wouldn't have been a great spell to counter, but... Um, you know, actually... I'm going to say no blocks here. Um, as much as I would love to block that and not take that damage, I don't actually think that's the problematic thing here. So we are going to play the Witherbloom Apprentice. They've got two cards in hand. A little worried. They could have quite a bit um, in terms of counter stuff. And then I think we just go for the Bastion and hope for the best. Uh, the other option would just be the Pest Summoning, um, but we need to crucially get something down that's going to start draining their life other than just the Apprentice now, and here I'm assuming they've got the counter. Yeah. Alright. Well, we did run into it, uh, and that's okay. I think, um... I think I'm just going to attack with this. Um... We are going to need to leave up some blockers here, obviously. I'm all too happy to block an 8-8 with a 1-1. One, one. Wow, okay. Sure. You got it. Interesting, interesting deck. Okay, so what we could do is Village Rites sacking the Eye Witch, uh, which then allows us to get the Fumes, which could allow us to get rid of this. Um, if we're going to play that route, that still leaves us with one mana available, so we are going to attack in here. They can flash in that Brazen Borrower if they'd like. They're not going to. Um... Part of me wants to just throw out the uh, the Dean here, to be honest. Um, but I think we just have to try and deal with this. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we get to draw two and learn. Necrotic Fumes. Um, and I'm really just hopeful they don't have a counter here. Um, target this. We obviously have to sack our own creature to do it. Please don't have the counter. Um, regardless, we can still just play a creature. So, like, we've still got, um, you know, blockers, things like that. So I'm not too worried about taking that damage. That's okay. Okay, that worked. Uh, that's great. In that case, we're just going to throw out one of these guys. We do get to learn here. Um... I think it's just a pest summoning, honestly. So we do have, I mean, they still have a clock on us. Let's be very clear in saying that because of this Brazen Borrower, we are still in trouble. Um, but we did take care of the big, big threat, uh, at least at this point. Oh, good. They've got another one. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. I'm going to play out the Dean of the Roots. They may, again, have just a counter or removal spell. I have no idea. Um, hmm. My goodness. They are just annoyingly... Uh, Involved with that, aren't they? Uh, okay. Um, we get this. All right. So now we're we're kind of in the same position. Unfortunately, they just have a flyer. We did sacrifice our flyer, so that's on me. But I think we had to kind of deal with the nine nine. Um, we weren't getting any value off of blocking it, and unfortunately, maybe that was the wrong call. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section because you guys. 
probably know a little better than I do. But regardless, I, I like the fact that we had that out. I mean, that's important to consider is that you always have the out. Um, and so thankfully, at least at that moment, we did. Um, Quandrix command, sure. My goodness. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's very little I think we can do at this point, honestly. Okay. Um, so, what can we do? What can we do? We can village rights away this. We do have a free turn to just do this. Um, cancel. We do attack in first, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not super helpful. Um, all right, so we unfortunately just lose here. So I'm going to go ahead and concede, and we will jump into a, no a new game. That was a relatively close one. I, that's a fun deck that they had. Uh, I, I really like the interaction that that deck has, so I'm very curious to see uh, maybe a build around that and, and maybe try that out for myself. But unfortunately, that is one and one. Let's jump into a third game and see if we can get the win. I would love to at least get the combo like really, really working. I mean, we did kind of see it in game one, uh, but I'd like to see it kind of flourish, we will say. Um, I think we keep this. This is a nice one, two uh, into three. It's not a super like combo heavy hand, but uh, it does give us the learn ability um, and just playing out these early turns is usually pretty helpful, <laughs> as it turns out. So we will see if it works. Looks like mono red is the, uh, the play here by the opponents. Um, I am going to take the one. <clears throat> There's the bastion. That's actually really helpful. Let's go ahead and throw one of these out there. Uh... Mm, mana values two or less that really doesn't help um i'm thinking long term with like embercleave as an example um but i think we just take the fumes honestly it's just a nice all-around like catch-all um it hits creatures planeswalkers which is everything we're gonna i mean creatures are really what we're worried about obviously here so i think it's fine to to do that <laughs> uh crucially though against mono red i do kind of like our uh our route here because there's not necessarily very little that they can do but there's a lot less that they can do um i am gonna block here i don't want to get hit with the uh the robber and we just gain a life which is nice um i'm actually just gonna play the love struck beast we're just gonna take that opportunity i'm not gonna attack with the one one um i do want to leave up a blocker here just as an in case measure uh, but this allows us to to hopefully stave off a few attacks here. Um, crucially, I think Mono Red is not in a great position on the standard ladder right now. Um, there's just a lot that not necessarily completely walls it, but makes it really difficult for it to really do its thing. Um, and even in this position, say they attack in, that's okay because we don't have to block if we don't want to. We've got a much bigger threat coming back at them. Um, and I don't particularly want to risk a block given that they could have like a Rimrock Knight or something like that to power stuff up here. So, and they're just not going to attack and that's perfect. So here, uh, let's make sure we do this in the correct, I think we just are going to play the Bastion. And again, we don't have to be aggressive. We don't have to attack in at all. Uh, this really, really decentivizes removal on their end. They're going to take the opportunity, of course, uh, before they get drained for life, which, hey, exactly what you should do. But uh, this is going to pump out another 1-1, one, one, and now we've got life drain every single time they remove one of our creatures. So um, I, I like our odds here, I will say. Um, we do need to get this down, uh, and then hopefully we can actually draw into the, uh, the Siege War Witch as well. Okay. But see, crucially, now they're burning all their removal, and it's still dealing damage to them and gaining us life. So it's like, that's kind of okay. Um, if they attack in here, I think we just take it. As much as I don't want to, um, I, I do think that that's the correct play. 
They're going to attack with both. Okay, so this is Embercleave territory, if I'm not mistaken, in which case we can block the Fervent Champion. Uh, which would get... It'd be a 2-2 with double strikes, so we should be okay there. Um, and then, again, we've got the Necrotic Fumes later on if we need it, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but I think that this is the okay block. I'm not going to be baited into the robber block. Uh, I think that that's not the right way to go. Um, there is the Embercleave, naturally. They're probably just going to hit the robber with it. Maybe. I would assume that that's the correct play. Yeah. Okay. So that just dies. We take a big hit there, but that's actually okay. Um, really need some lands here once again. Uh, we're kind of in a bad place there, but... Uh, let's see. Hmm. I think we just play this out. Um, we're going to pull this. Uh, we can attack here. I kind of like attacking, honestly. We're going to try it. Um, we're going to be a little bit aggressive here and just see what happens. Um, maybe it's not correct, but even if they burn this, we gain two life out of it. Ooh, that's a little scary, actually. Uh, and this having trample is terrible for us, so... Oh, wow, and they stole a Lovestruck Beast. That's pretty good. So we are going to block here to make sure that this dies. At least we gain some life in the process. That's bad. That's real bad. Uh, we really need a black mana here, like, pretty badly. Because uh, then we can deal with the Torbrand. Okay, well, there it is. Um, the trick is, though, we do have to sacrifice one of our things to do it. Um, and we can't play that... Ooh, we might be in trouble here, guys. We might be in trouble. Um, yeah, because if we do that, we're just dead. Uh, even if we do this, we're dead. So, unfortunately... Um, actually, we should wait, I suppose. I mean, this isn't going to work, but... No attacks, I suppose. I don't think we can get through this. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our stuff is going to die, so it's going to hit them for some life here, but, um, and crucially, they don't have lifelink, like, they don't have a way to, to gain any life, which is nice. Um, but I think we are a little too late on the lands. I think that is my biggest, uh, I will say gripe with this deck so far, is that I find it very difficult to hit, uh, lands on time, and maybe that's just like my issue I, I don't know um but that certainly seems to be a problem <clears throat> what did they take just a land i believe yeah <laughs> curious to see what they end up doing here other than just attacking so he's going to deal five and then five again so, we can block here, which I hate to have to do, but we do. <laughs> Opponent really thinking, okay. The opponent really taking their time to make sure that they're playing methodically and doing the right thing, which I appreciate very, very much. At the same time, I wish they wouldn't, but here we are. <laughs> There's the Bone Crusher Giant. I am going to sack one of these to draw a couple cards and gain a couple life. There's the Witch. Um... But it's a little bit too late, unfortunately. So we can play this. Um, and now we can plume the... But it does not do enough, uh, unfortunately. Let's just see what happens, just for fun. Just to see. 
Yeah, all right. We're gonna play one final game, guys. I do appreciate everybody sticking around, and I do, again, this is a learning experience for me, so I guarantee you I'm not playing perfectly. If you do notice something that is just glaringly obvious, my bad, but feel free to share it in the comment section below. I would be all too happy to read it. Uh, this this is a deck that I want to try and practice with a little bit uh, because I do think that this has some legs. And hey, look at that. Ace the Gunner has followed. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I don't turn off the alerts uh, for Twitch and stuff like that as we play these games, and it's kind of funny to me. We will keep... Uh, not double black is a little tricky again, but uh, this does have a nice little early game play with the love struck beast um oh looks like a mirror match fair enough uh let's see let's see um i don't actually want to trade that off do i uh let's play dean of the vein here just to have a play honestly we know that they don't have a lot of removal in the decks, so like we can kind of safely just start playing some stuff out here. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. I have no idea how this could go. Uh, let's get Bastion down. I think that's going to be very important, given we've got a mirror match here. They're going to sack and draw. So they do get to learn. Uh, oh, they just drew. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, well, let's swing the life total back in our favor with the uh, the Dean here. Uh, if they do have a third land, obviously they just get to play out the Lovestruck Beast or the Bastion. Fair enough. Okay. Um, hmm. Just want to see what happens. Just gonna take it. Um, in that case, I am gonna play the Love Struck Beast, and we're gonna try and fight this through. I don't know if this is the right play. I'm going the more aggressive route, I think. Um, I trying to keep that life total in our favor. Um, that's scary. Double Bastion is going to be quite difficult here. Uh, there's the second black though. That's actually very helpful. So let's do this. Let's create a little 1-1. One, one. Um, let's also just pull a Pest Summoning here. Uh, and... So if we swing here, they just block with something. Uh, but I actually think that it's better to do that now. So I'm going to attack in. I want to do this before they have any kind of Magecraft on the field. Um, because obviously that's more of a problem. So we are going to take a couple points of damage here, uh, but crucially we're still above their life total, and the Bastion is still helping us slightly. We we need, if we get a second one, we're in really good shape, but... <laughs> Ooh, there's the Siege War Witch. That's scary. There's the Eye Witch as well. Uh, okay, uh, that's helpful. Let's plume for... Well, what do we do first here? I think we actually just kind of go in for it, don't we? No, we don't attack. Okay, so let's do this. Let's sack. So if we do five, that's pretty close to enough. It's not quite there, though. Um, and then we also just don't have many creatures left. But you know what? Screw it. We're here. We're going to try it. It's pretty close to enough. It's not quite. Um, but it does mean we hit for a decent amount here. And we just draw a lot of cards. Oh, I'm sorry. This Is this... Nah, it's not quite. I was going to say, I thought we were getting close, but we weren't quite there. And then I saw it stack, and I was like, oh, maybe. Uh, but no. Okay, but... Crucially... This does work. We did it. We found the win. All right. 
that was our last game guys we ended on a two and two record which i'm actually okay with again given that this is really my first uh practice with this deck i'm not upset about that again if i misplayed if you saw anything that was just glaringly obvious and i'm sure there were a lot of things feel free to leave them in the comment section but Overall, I think we played okay. Some learning points for sure, but I do really like this strategy. I think it's very, very good. I do kind of not like the land side of things. I, I get it. This list is very curated. It's very, I mean, every card is there for a very specific reason. So there's not a lot of flex in the slots, uh, which I, I think makes sense. But we had a lot of land issues. That may have just been unlucky draws, so that's not necessarily a hit to the deck, but uh, in my experience, that was a little bit frustrating. But other than that, it was a really, really fun deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Like I said, I will be out of town. I'm going to be visiting my grandmother for the first time in a while, so I'm very excited about that. But I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well, and I hope you guys have a fun weekend. Make sure you check out the Fun Friday video as well. It was a great one, and uh, do stay tuned next week for more gameplay, more openings more all kinds of stuff but anyway thanks so much guys i appreciate it and i'll see you in the next gameplay video